Welcome to Alloway Parish Church. Wherever you're viewing from, it's great to have you along. This is the first week in Lent. As you've noticed, we bring into the church our Lenten cross. Our first symbol is bread, mindful of Jesus saying in the wilderness, man shall not live by bread alone. Let us together worship Almighty God. Our first hymn, Give Thanks. Now we unite our hearts in prayer together. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, in this season of Lent, we turn away from the busyness of our world to still our hearts, to worship and praise you, to seek your forgiveness and to ask for renewal. Create in us, Lord God, a clean heart and put our right spirit within us. We come in this season of Lent, remembering Jesus' lonely, challenging days in the wilderness, his time wrestling with temptation. We remember how in the wilderness he heard your call, and in the strength of your spirit, 
would go on to exercise a ministry which restored and transformed the lives of many. Help us to learn from his desert example. To search our hearts as he did. To find our calling, reflect on our faith, resist temptation, and commit ourselves more wholly to you. In this penitent season, we do confess our sins, acknowledge our faults, accept our weaknesses, and ask your forgiveness. Create in us a clean heart, O Lord, and put a right spirit within. In these difficult days, whatever trials we face, we pray, Lord God, that you will grant us strength enough to live one day at a time, mindful of your promise to be with us always. Hear this, our prayer, and hear us as we join together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If there's one thing in Scotland that we're good at talking about, it's the weather. We even have our own vocabulary. There can be what we would call a smur of rain. You can come in from the rain, drook it to the skin. And when it's grey and it never brightens up, we would call it a right drich day. Well, as far as the weather is concerned, I have to say to you, Scotland has been shivering, not so much this week, but last week. Indeed, our friends up in Braemar it plunged down to minus 23 degrees centigrade. Pretty cold, and no doubt with a snell wind. We were, of course, offered a little forecast back in Candlemas Day. Can you remember what they said? If Candlemas Day be fair and bright, winter will have another fight. And our hearts goes out, of course, to all our friends in America, particularly around the Texas area, where they've never had it so cold. Now, whether it is drich, or whether the snow is falling, or whether it's just a dark and dreary day, there's something wonderful and something very encouraging which happens around about this year. And it happens, of course, because these flowers thrive in a damp environment. You know what I'm going to talk about? The snowdrop. Galantis, meaning milk flower. Snowdrops fight their way through some of the lowest temperatures, some of the wettest conditions, sleeping through the winter time and come up to herald the coming spring. There's a lovely little poem written by a school teacher I'd like to share with you now, entitled The Snowdrop. As winter fades above you, your crown pokes through the ground. You tentatively peep and take a regal look around. Good morning, little snowdrop, so full of hope and grace. How wonderful to welcome 
your gentle, smiling face. You stretch to reach the sunlight with a gracious, sylph-like yawn. Your confidence is growing. Hope of spring begins to dawn. Good afternoon, young snowdrop, so full of peace and love. How wonderful to welcome you to the world above. The snow has disappeared and winter turns and leaves. You wave farewell, revealing your long and slender sleeves. Good day, my little snowdrop, so delicate and fine. How wonderful to welcome you into this heart of mine. You sway in celebration, lightly dancing in the breeze. The weather has a delicate and sudden tiny sneeze. Good evening, humble snowdrop. I'm so pleased that you're here. You bring a breath of life to the beginning of the year. I can't believe I'm the only person to welcome these snowdrops. They are harbingers of spring and they do give us hope for better, warmer, drier days to come. Hope indeed springs eternal. But perhaps, you know, instead of just noticing the snowdrops and the hope we bring, the challenge we all face is to do what the snowdrops do, to become hope bearers to other people. And the thing is, of course, like the snowdrops, we don't have to do great, big, dramatic things. I mean, I am full of people who seem to have great hope. The wonderful Desmond Tutu, he said, I am not an optimist. I am a prisoner of hope. Perhaps, truth be told, at times we find it difficult to hope and to hold on to our faith. That is true, but the challenge, as I've said for us all, is not just to hold on to that hope for ourselves, but to share that hope with others. For this, I truly believe even although at times it's under, difficult to understand what it means, for Christian people, always, always, the best is yet to be. The reading this morning is taken from the New Testament in Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to 13. Jesus is tested in the wilderness. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So, if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Amen, and may God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. 
There's a well-known story of a female missionary who worked in the desert with children. Um, As she was driving out there, she ran out of petrol and remembered that there was a petrol station several miles back. So she went back there and discovered she only had a potty to carry the petrol. She carried the petrol in the potty, started to fill her tank, and just as she did so, a large car drew up. Out of the car, a large Arab sheik. And this is what he said. Madam, I do not agree with your religion, but I do admire your faith. If I was looking for a little title for our second reflection, it would be Faith in the Desert. Faith in the Desert. I don't know if you know the major sand deserts of the world. I have to remind myself. The Sahara, the Australian, and of course the Arabian Desert as well. I must admit, I don't think I've been in any of these deserts, but I have been in the Judean Desert, and right down at the foot of the Judean Desert is the Dead Sea. And what really, really surprised me, not to learn that it could go up to 50 degrees centigrade down at the Dead Sea, what really surprised me to see all these modern hotels with their swimming pools selling cold beers down at the lowest point on earth. Desert experiences, experiences in the wilderness, there you seldom find such comforts. Jesus, we remember, in Lent was led into the wilderness. He was not the first person to go into the wilderness, of course, especially in the Old Testament. We find many people, and Moses in particular, who was led also into the desert. Of course, we remember him as that child that was hidden in the bulrushes that grew up in the court of Pharaoh, became a prince of Egypt. But it's not there in that very comfortable environment, no. It's out when he's watching the sheep of his father, Jethro, in a place some people think perhaps near the Sinai Peninsula. It's out in the desert. He sees this burning bush and he approaches this burning bush. And as the burning bush is not consumed, he hears God's voice and he hears God's call more clearly than he hears it in any other place. I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their sufferings. Now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. Strange things can happen in the wilderness. And of course it was that same people, the Hebrew people, that learned more about their God, not in the fertile plains of the Nile with the Egyptian people that they'd lived with for years and years, but no, when they were led out into the wilderness. There, of course, they knew the sustaining hand of God with bread from heaven. There they were led uh, by a pillar of light and a cloud through the desert. There they understood more about themselves and more about their God before they entered the promised land. It is no accident that three out of the four Gospels want us to know that before Jesus began his public ministry, he too was also led into the desert. He too would also know very testing times. So Moses was led into the desert and there found God. 
in the desert, the Hebrew people were drawn closer to God, came to depend on him in a way they never had before. And so also for Jesus, that desert experience was a formative one. It may well be you have never stepped into the Saharan desert or the Australian desert or the Judean desert, but I can guarantee all of us, all of us will have wilderness experiences in our lives. Times when the going gets rough and it's tough just to live day by day. It could be a wilderness of ill health. It could be a wilderness of loss, of mourning for people who used to journey with you. There are times when all of us feel isolated and tested and alone. It's true. The desert or the wilderness can break you or in faith it could make you with God's spirit by your side. I don't know how you feel over the past year. It's felt something of a wilderness experience living through lockdown. But I would suggest there are some lessons that we have learned in this wilderness experience that we don't want to forget. Number one, how we understand how interlinked we are. We always used to talk about the importance only of the individual but what about the importance of everyone and the common good? Or have we not marveled too during lockdown at the devotion of the carers in our society? Have we not repeatedly undervalued them in the past? And going forward, will we remember how important they were and will be for us in the future. God has lessons for us all. I suspect we learn them best in the desert. And I would be first to say to you, look, I'm no Moses. I'm not as faithful as the people of Israel. I'm not as faithful as our Lord and Master. But repeatedly I say to you, our calling is not simply to survive a global pandemic. Our calling is to respond to what God wants us to do, what we alone can do for him. And so I remind you again of the great advice of a saint greater than me, John Wesley, who maintained, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. And wouldn't it be marvellous, wouldn't it be marvellous if someone would say to us, I don't necessarily share your religion, but... I do admire your faith. Jesus, full of the Spirit, was led into the wilderness. Amen.
We unite our hearts in prayer together. Let us pray. Faith is unseen but felt. Faith is strength when we feel we have none. Faith is hope when all seems lost. God of love, whose Son knew a time of great testing and temptation, be with, we pray, those who now are tested. Hear the cry of those who yearn for love. We remember with tenderness those in fractured families, broken homes, those who feel neglected, unwanted, and alone. God of love, draw near. God of justice, hear the cry of those who yearn for justice and fairness, those who are persecuted and oppressed for creed or for colour, exploited, ill-treated, broken. Lord God, draw near. God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace in battle zones and broken places, people who are frightened, fearful, or anxious. God of peace, hear our prayer. God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing, those who are hurting physically and spiritually, those who feel they are alone, forgotten in a wilderness. God of healing, hear our prayer. And here we pray, Lord God, the cry of those this day who are penitent, those who know the need of your grace, those with a contrite and humble heart. Through whatever testing time we face, grant us to know your spirit, challenging, strengthening, comforting, as together in your strength we journey home. Amen. We close our service uh, singing together. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrims through this barren land.
we say the grace together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May the light of God shine on us today. Straight.